I'm standing by the cross of Charlemagne in the heart of the hill of Courton. We're about to take a little walk around the hill and look at some of its different terroirs and some of its particularities. Uh, it's an incredibly large area of vineyard, well over 100 hectares, uh, all classified as, as Grand Cru. Um, some can be white, some can be red. There are various particularities of labeling systems. Um, but why is it so big? In fact, it's interesting because in 1943, uh, early in 1943, it was, ex it was expanded. The Grand Cru part of the hill was expanded substantially. And this was actually as, as a way to preclude um, the occupying Germans from being able to compulsorily purchase uh, wine at prices that they were able to set. Uh, later in 1943, another solution uh, w w was arrived at, which was to invent Premier Cru. There were no Premier Cru before 1943. This is why, in fact, you don't have Premier Cru historically in the Maconnais, which was uh, um, part of um, part of uh, Vichy France, whereas uh, in the occupied zone you have Premier Cru. So Montagny, obviously, you have a lot of Premier Cru all through the Côte Chalonnaise, all through the Côte d'Or. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that you know, often people don't necessarily know. Uh, what else is interesting? Well, uh, you have a real variance you can see here in altitude. We'll explore some of the different expositions here. We have a very southerly exposition. We go around the hill, we go to the west. Around that side, we have a much more easterly exposition. Uh, and so you have very different kinds of, and styles of wine, in fact, for, a, for an appellation where everything uh, can have the same name. Uh, you have a lot of different, a lot of diversity. It's also just a beautiful place to, to be, you know, behind me you have Savigny and uh, Pernod Vergeles. You have uh, the, the, the city of Bone there, all of the premier crew of Bone on the hillside there, looking down through to the south, you can see all, all, all the way uh, to, to the Coachellanes. So uh, it's a great, it's great fun and thanks for giving me the excuse to, to get out in the vineyards. So right now it's uh, just uh, about one o'clock in the afternoon, and we're in the heart of uh, Corton Charlemagne, the, the core of the Alos Corton part of Corton Charlemagne. You see, we have the, the sun, uh, midday sun, right on us, full south, southeast facing. Uh, so, optimal sun exposure. This makes the sort of the biggest, most muscular, powerful uh, wines in the in, uh, white wines from the hill of Corton. Uh, here is Cochery's parcel. Here's the Mendel Romanet Contis that they lease from Bonneau de Martre, uh, among several. And Bonneau uh, de Martre have their own parcels in the vicinity. Louis Le Tours are over there in the direction of the village, a little bit more. So you see, this is really where the, the more muscular, powerful expressions of Africa on Charlemagne come from with real amplitude flesh. Uh, but even though this is a sunny, ripe site, uh, thanks to the sort of um, the soil hydrology with these very um, uh, Marni soils. We have uh, water that percolates through the hill. So, so this is actually a site that also does quite well generally in hot uh, and sunny vintages, despite being a hot sunny site. Here you can see something uh, new that the DRC is doing. Um, they've actually increased the uh, stakes a little bit in height, and they've ha they have now two uh, wires at the top instead of just one. So that's changed since I was last uh, up here. And the idea then would be to be able to take the canopy obviously a little bit higher and these two wires give a bit better support to the top of the canopy so you can get, as you see, the hedging a little bit higher, you get a bit more shade on the fruiting zone and on the soil. So right now we're at the very top of the hill of Corton, about 450 meters I guess. Uh, so you can see firstly that we're really at quite a high altitude um, down below Corton Chalamagne, also up here Corton Chalamagne in, in Chardonnay and you're going to have vineyards that ripen at very different times. Uh, you can also see right behind me the uh, forest of Corton. Uh, now, the forest of Corton is very important because uh, it captures a lot of, a lot of water. Uh, so it's a really ra rather large surface area, and this permits that sort of water that's captured up there to gradually, throughout the season, percolate out uh, into the, the terroir of, of the hill. Um, it's one of the reasons that the hill tends to do pretty well in sunny vintages. And then you also see the sheer diversity of terroir after the, the, the sunny Alos side of things. You go up the Combe into Pernod Vergeles and you go in much cooler sites that just make, make wines that have less of that sort of muscularity. They're leaner, they're a bit more acidic, um, they age very well. And this is where you would associate, for example, um, there are plenty of holdings that belong to Domaine Rappe, uh, Christophe Rumier's parcel of Cordon Chalamani is, is up at that end. Um, so the real, it comprehends a lot of diversity, uh, and I think also the forest is, is a very important thing to, to remember as well. So here we're in uh, 
the more west-facing part of the hill of Corton, a lot of Corton Charlemagne here. Um, in the uh, Pernon Vergelesse, so there's the village of Pernon with its very pretty little church uh, and little chapel uh, up on the up on the hill just behind it. Uh, here we're in very much in Bonne de Martre and, and, and Rappe territory, and this is this is um, where you have uh, you get wines that are maybe a bit leaner, a bit more acid-driven, a bit more taut uh, than the more muscular, rich wines produced from the more south-facing part of the hill. So here we're in a spot that's quite interesting uh, because you can see the sort of white marly soils that really define the parts of the hill of Coton where um, white wine excels. Uh, you can see it's a sort of very uh, limestone rich clay uh, interspersed with, with boulders and uh, of limestone. Um, a lot of producers associate this kind of soil with white wines that have a lot of dry extract, a lot of structure, you know, real sort of, uh, for want of a better word, mineral undercurrent, um, sort of white wines that are structured more like red wines. And that's something you often see in the best uh, white uh, Corton Charlemagne. So we started out by the cross of Charlemagne with a uh, beautiful south-facing exposition. We had a little look up uh, towards Pernon where the exposition goes to the west and right now we're at the top of Corton Clos de Bois uh, and here as you can see uh, we've come around the hill we're a much more east-facing exposition southeast east. Uh, so here we're in uh, prime red wine territory um, not that far away we have Pouget uh, here at Clos de Bois and down there Bresson and there's a, a continuation of very nice red wine, the predominantly red wine vineyards uh, along, along the slope, often with a bit of white at the top. Uh, soils are a bit redder here, really quite a lot redder, but with quite a lot of, um, of uh, fragments of limestone. Uh, down there in Bresson, soils get a bit richer, a bit more clay, and, uh, and the, the wines can be a bit broader, a bit fatter, a bit more enveloping. Here, something a bit, a bit finer, a bit more elegant, but also with plenty of, of power and authority. So this is real, really a great vineyard and, and one of the finest vineyards in, uh, on the hill of Corton. So much like the hillside of Bone, the hillside of Corton has some um, really important players uh, in terms of land holdings in the form of the Négociant, uh, round by the cross of Charlemagne. Uh, Latour, uh, Louis Latour, has large holdings. Uh, around the village, there's also some big holdings belonging to Jadot. And here on the sort of more east-facing side of the hill, uh, we have a huge block belonging to Bouchard in Le Corton. Here they make Corton Charlemagne and red uh, Corton. And in fact, I think the last few vintages of their red Corton, they've really been doing a, an especially good job. So it's you know, one of the more attainable wines from the hill uh, in terms of the parcels we visited in this in this little walk uh, that you can actually get hold of and, and taste. So we're now really well in the Lanzois uh, part of Corton and this is actually the Corton Charlemagne of uh, Domaine Loire. It's interesting because you can see how steep the slope is um, to the extent that because of erosion, uh, more soil and nutrients at the bottom of the parcel is a bit more vigor. You can see the leaves uh, and the canopies are still holding here, whereas the rest of the parcel, they're pretty much gone. Um, it's always interesting to, to see that. You should never judge a parcel on the first couple of vines. You need to get into the parcel to really see um, how the vertical cho choices pan out. Uh, what else can you see? You can look down uh, to the village of Ladois. This is kind of a sector that we have caught on Renard uh, below. This is a, a sector that produces, you know, um, white wines that have often a very sort of cool, very structured style, but quite a lot of muscle to them. They're probably a bit bigger, sh broader shouldered than, uh, than the Pernon side of Courton. And take a long time. I mean, Lali always tells me that she kind of regrets having Chardonnay here and thinks she should plant Pinot Noir. I think she thinks it's a red. So uh, it also makes, you know, pretty slow evolving red wines uh, from, this, from this sector of Courton. 